in this movie, I'm going to be talking about um, introducing the idea of stability and lifting air that um, is on, you know, at some level, lifting it to another level or forcing air to, to go down or forcing it to go up. And, and this is a prelude to things like, you know, warm warm front coming in, hitting a cold front, and the warm air is forced up over the cold front and and it'll, you know, trigger certain types of weather or um or winds that go up against a mountain are forced up and you know and then that's gonna trigger certain types of weather and so on. So we're gonna start with uh, um this example and what we have here are temperature temperature and dew point measurements uh, for many different heights. And this would be the result of, um, of a weather balloon uh, measuring um, temperature and dew point and, and, and other things. This obviously is just a small, small uh, subset. We start with the, 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 the fact that if you take air and you force it to go up, so you kind of lift it up in some way, then it's going to expand and cool at a known rate called the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And that, that lapse rate is always 10 degrees per kilometer. So if you force air up, that, um, it, and then it'll cool at that, at that rate. If you force air down, it will warm at that rate. So if we, um, and this is true, this is called the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Um, because it's for unsaturated air. So, so let's start with, imagine that we have, we start off with air that's at 34 degrees at the surface. And so I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna look at my, the, the parcel temperature. Um, and at the surface it's 34. And now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna force it up to half a kilometer. Uh, and ask the question, how warm will it be? And so starting at 34, cooling at 10 degrees per kilometer, um, what I get is, you know, 34 degrees minus 10 degrees per kilometer times 0.5 kilometers. So that's going to give me five degree cooler and that's going to give me 29 degrees. So, so by lifting it up, it's going to be cooler and it's going to be a different temperature than the surrounding air at this point, and we'll see how, what kind of effect that is. If the air happens to be saturated, it's going to cool at a different rate. Now, the saturated rate can can range um, between the three and eight, eight uh, degrees per uh, per kilometer. I will typically give you the uh, um, the the rate that we're going to use, and it's usually somewhere around six degrees per kilometer. And so if we start with air that's saturated and we know it's saturated because the temperature is equal to the, to the dew point, we start off with 25 degrees. We then force it up to the next level. And that's again, half a, kilo, half a kilometer. So, so what I'd have is 25 degrees minus six degrees per kilometer times 0.5 kilometers and that's going to be it's going to be cooled by 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 three degrees so that's going to give me uh 22 degrees um and it and it and it's saturated if um the reason why the saturated rate is less than the dry rate is because as we cool and we're saturated, we're going to get condensation. The temperature is going to get, you're going to start to be bigger than the, the, the dew point. We'll go into the super saturated region and we'll get condensation and the humidity in itself will drop um, as the dew point, which, which started off at 25 degrees, will just match the temperature as, 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 it, as, it, as it cools off, cool off. So if I were to continue um, lifting this parcel from, from here, and, and lift it up another level, it'll cool by another three degrees or uh, be, be at 19 degrees. And the dew point will, be t will, will also be 19 degrees. It'll, it'll follow it as, 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 it goes, as it goes up. The reason why um, condensation matters is that condensation gives back energy to this to to these to the system so it took energy to evaporate uh the the uh, uh the the water to become water vapor when you condense it's exactly the reverse and you get that energy 
back. Um, and so what we have is we essentially have a parcel that cools at the dry rate, but then is offset by the warming caused by the condensation. And so that's the, that's the reason why we uh, um, have a saturated rate that is always less than the dry rate. Now things can get a little messy if we start off a parcel, say, say we actually started with, um, with air at, at the two kilometer, okay. <clears throat> at the two kilometer level, we have it's 17 degrees and it's 16 degrees, um, and so our so our parcel temperature is 17 17 degrees. And since we're not saturated, you would think that that if you go up to the next level, you would cool by uh, you know, 10 degrees per kilometer times a half a kilometer. And you would, you would think that you would cool by five degrees. And I'll, I'll put a little question mark there because that's not actually what happens. Even so, you can notice that, that this temperature is clearly going to be, uh, below the dew point. So somewhere in between two kilometers and 2.5 kilometers, do we get the, uh, um, uh, we, we end up saturated. So what we have to do is figure out at what level that is and then, um, and then, and then switch to the saturated rate at the, at that point. I'll do that, um, in another, in another movie. Okay. So this is just, you know, the properties of air as we, as we lift it. And, um, and then we can ask, then we can, uh, get into the idea of stability. So what stability means is, um, what stability means is, is, uh, is the following. So if you, if you have a, um, a bowl and you have a marble at the bottom of the, of the bowl, if I were to push the, the marble up, it would return going back down. If I were to push it up in the other direction, it would return coming back coming back down. This is what would be called stable. Each, each way that I push it, um, it, it, it goes back in the opposite direction. If, however, I took my marble and I parked it at the top of the bowl, any push that I give either direction is going to result in the marble continuing in the same direction. So that's what, this is what would be called unstable. Now, it's also true that, that if you, if you happen to have something that, that, that is say unstable in one direction, something like this, you know, where essentially this direction might be, might, might look, you know, might look stable or flat, uh, but this direction is unstable, that would be unstable. Or if it's just flat, this would be, you know, and we have our marble, uh, um, at, at this point, um, uh, this would be called neutral. So we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply this idea to um, the layers of the uh, um, in the in the atmosphere, and and pretty much um, use two essential ideas. One is if we have uh, a warm air parcel in a cooler environment. So surrounded by uh, um, uh, cooler air, that parcel will rise. Warm air tends to rise, and the exact opposite. If we have a cool parcel in a warm environment, the parcel will sink. Those two, combined with our dry adiabatic lapse rates, our saturated lapse rates, will let us determine the stability of the atmosphere. And I'll do that in the next movie.